Hi, I'm Diane with So Batique, and today I'm actually home, don't tell anyone, and I decided it was time for me to finish this Jersey Knit floor rug. I really love making scrappy projects, and all of the Jersey Knit that I've been working with, whether it be in the office or at home while I make my garments, I end up with long strips of fabric, and with those long strips of fabric, we decided to do something with them because what can't you do with three inches by seven inches of 72 inch wide Jersey knit? Um, we gotta be able to do something. So the first thing I wanted to do was make a rug and add a little bit of decor to the house. And I didn't even realize it until I was sitting here that I selected one of our Jersey knit packs that is greens and lake and teal and purples and it happens to be the same color as uh, a quilt i have in the living room so uh, i guess i picked the right pack but you'll see various color combinations on our website as well but i wanted to kind of show you what i do and why i think the jersey knit is just perfect for these rugs um, first and foremost the jersey knit is of course a knit and um, if any of you have made a rug or a handwoven rug from cotton, it can get flat if it is woven um, or braided loosely or even tight. You always need something underneath it to make it um, not slippy and all that kind of stuff in your home. And I just, the weight of this Jersey knit is just perfect for braiding a rug. So I'm gonna show you real quick and as you can see, I'm not done yet, but this here, and I'm gonna hold all this up so you can kind of tell what I'm dealing with here. All of this is from one pack of the Jersey Knit remnants. And I think it's gonna make a pretty good sized rug. Um, and I will show it to you once I get it all done. But, um, Here's how I braid a rug, and I'm gonna take you through a couple of steps. And I'm trying to do a lot of this right now without my sewing machine. We sew a lot in our sewing rooms um, when we're making, whether it be quilts or garments. And I just think that every now and again, it's kind of fun to do something without sitting in front of the sewing machine. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how I start kind of think about the color rotation that you want in your project. And so I'm just gonna pick three different shades to put together. And you can either create a knot at the end of your three fabrics, or I start with a pin for two reasons. I just take a safety pin, pin it together, and then I also need an anchor somewhere here so that this can be attached to so that I can braid this without having too much difficulty. So I have this pillow that I made out of scraps, matches that quilt, and I pin it to the pillow and I let it be kind of be, become that weight. And, but I'm gonna hold it up here so that you can kind of see what we're doing. So we take the three fabrics and just like you're braiding a hair or anything else, um we're gonna braid so we take it and loosely but yet it's gonna feel tight but just loosely braid and weaving these back and forth since it's three pieces of fabric of course it's just a simple braid and it's try to keep it so that it is laying all in one direction as well um, I don't think that matters too much, but that's the look that I really like on the front surface of a rug is that it shows the braiding um, that you've done and the different colors that you have in the three strands um, that you're putting together at that time. Uh, the, as you can see, it goes kind of fast. And I remember doing this when I made this one here with all the braids, watching TV, and what was a movie, and then moving the pillow away and letting it be its own resistance against the braid until I needed to add another fabric segment to it. 
And so it just kind of lets it pull away. And you can do this with really gets your mind re released from anything else that you're kind of working on. So it's very good for that purpose as well. But we're coming down to an end. And so I'm going to show you how to join the segments as well. Okay, the green one's going to end first. So let's take and cut a hole in the bottom of this one. We always want to make sure it's kind of just a little bit of a hole like that. Okay. And then we're going to take the next segment, put it through the hole. Cut another hole through this one. Pull up the bottom of this new segment of fabric and pull it through. Make it pretty tight, actually. And then it's going to have the little strands that, or the edges that stick up, which you end up seeing all over the top and bottom of your rug once you get it all put together. But that's how you join them. And then you just continue braiding until you have the length, use up all the fabric or the length of the rug that you want. And I can honestly tell you, I don't know exactly how much of this you need for a rug. And I've seen various tutorial, tutorials out there where people will, um, they braid as they go or they're making their rug as they're braiding so that they know how much fabric they have. I decided not to do that. I took the whole um, remnant pack of Jersey knit and braided it together in a semi color pleasing format. And I just want the whole thing to be my rug. Um, so now, now that we've done this, let's start the rug. I'm gonna unpin this, leave this together. Now you have to kind of decide, do you want, what shape do you want your rug to be? Do you want it to be round? Or do you want it to be oval or I've never done a square one, so it could be square as well. But I decided to make an oval one. I'm gonna show you this one more time. And I think it was about 12 to 14 inches down the middle for where I started this project. So if you take your braid and slightly curve it, okay, like that, take your needle and thread, I'm using a longer embroidery needle and I'm using a 40 weight polyester that I have. And I, I'm, a, I'm using gray. You can use any color that you want. It'll show up or it might not show up. It depends on where you put your stitches. But I start here in this loop and just work it across to hide your knot. Not that you should need to hide your knot on a rug, but I kind of do. And then just like you're using a hem stitch, go between the two braids, connecting them. And this can be very loose. Actually, it's preferred not to be tight because the minute you make it tight, your rug is going to start curling up on you like a bowl. And it's better to keep things really, really loose. So we're gonna connect them with a little bit of a hand hemmed zigzag all the way around and just keep building it as you go. Okay, and that's the technique to making this rug. Now let me show you where I'm at here. I have so far, this is probably the size of a placemat right now, but I'm gonna continue with my stitches, hand stitches. And like I said, mine started curling up just a little bit and I realized I was pulling some things too tightly. So go back and just make sure that it's not too tight because um, you don't wanna have any curling or whatever when you put it on the floor. So I think this will be really, really neat. And, but like I said, if you don't have time or you wanna just kind of finish the project, you can take this up to your sewing machine or wherever your sewing machine is and do a, um, I would probably do a wider zigzag stitch and 
you're going to need a heavier needle because the jersey knit is very thick when you have a braid like this. So I would actually recommend a leather needle and um, at least 40 weight or a heavier cotton um, thread just to make sure that you are I don't want you to break any needles, so you're going to need something that's a lot heavier. So I would use a leather or a jean uh, needle on your sewing machine and go slow. There's no need to go fast on your sewing machine. So that is my little quick tutorial on how I'm making this homemade rug out of our Jersey Knit scrap remnant bags that we have on our website. And I hope you try it. And I hope you have a fun experience and then you make yourself a rug. And give us a shout. Show us what you're making. Have a great day and join us again.